In the early 1400s, the bishops and the religious authorities of the Christian world got together in a beautiful place called London, very beautiful place called London, and they all got together to debate whether women were human or not. And they came up with the conclusion that no, they were not human. Right. In the year 1746, in France, again, a very enlightened group of Christian clergymen got together in a very beautiful place, in a very, very beautiful place called Paris, in order to debate whether women truly were devils or have we improved in our thought of who they are. So they had a debate for three days, intense debate, pros and cons, pluses and minuses. Who are they? What are they? What's their true nature? <laughs> They're talking about their mothers for God's sakes. They're talking about their mothers and their wives and their daughters and their sisters. What did they conclude? They concluded that mm, they are human, but their souls are lesser than the souls of men. And this was a conclusion of this council of clergymen in the year 1746. And in the year 1700, 700, after the birth of Jesus Christ, a man by the name of Muhammad had a very different conclusion. He had said women are not only equal to men, but they can actually be sometimes even better than men. It is such a shame that when a Prophet Muhammad this blessed man who gave such value to women and removed these misconceptions and these idiocracies that people said about their other half that subhanallah that it is now today that we say that Islam denigrates women what a irony subhanallah what a hypocrisy. What a hypocrisy. The West are children of these same bishops from France and of the same, same bishops from, from UK who said these sort of things. And today now we believe that we have liberated women whereas Islam had done that so many years ago. Take the example of the mother of Salahuddin Ayyubi radiallahu anhu. At the age of six years old, at the age of six, he used to send Salahuddin to where? To where the knights would train, the Muslim knights would be training. He would say, go, my son, wake up in the morning, go and clean their stables. Go and prepare their swords where they're fighting and they're training. Watch them train. And he would not, she would not allow him to come back home until the nightfall, watching them how they fought. Watching them they did. at the age of six. Did Salahuddin conquer Jerusalem except by the training of a mother like this and she was a Kurdish woman she was a Kurdish woman and that's why the scholars used to say the son of the Kurdiya the son of the Kurdish woman conquered for us Jerusalem which is why our brothers and sisters mashallah now are still there and it's in Islam's third holiest place mashallah has it not happened because of dedication of mothers like this? SubhanAllah. Because of this? Imam Malik, may Allah have mercy upon him, said by Allah, the greatest reason for me being where I am today is my mother. My mother would wake me up after Fajr. My mother would wake me up before Fajr. Make me, give me a shower, put my turban on in my head, and at Fajr time, send me off to the, to the Salah and say, go and study and come back at nightfall. And I would come back at nightfall. She would take my clothes off my body. She would ask me what I learned that day. Then she would prepare food for me and I would eat. And then she would stay awake until I fell asleep. 